Alrighty guys, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Josh and today we're going to be replacing the circuit board from the 79 Corvette. This one is pretty worn out. I I actually was I was actually having issues with the with some of the gauges not well the clock being one because as we spoke last time this was burnt and also i started having issues with the gauge for the oil pressure and so i decided you know what we're gonna go ahead and replace the whole thing redo it add a new one and hopefully that fixes some of our issues hopefully the clock will start working also quick thing to note if you guys are interested in knowing how to remove this from the car please feel free to watch my other video in this part and let me know if you guys have any questions. Thank you for watching. Before I get started, I wanna give a huge shout out to Kevin Watso-12 for sponsoring this video. Kevin Watso-12 is a store on eBay that sells nothing but circuit boards and motherboards for your vehicles, including my Corvette, with good quality, fast shipping, and most importantly, made in USA. These products are amazing with overwhelming feedback ratings. Kevin Watso has been in the business for about five years now. So next time you're looking for circuit boards, make sure to check them out on eBay.com at Kevin Watso-12. So first things first, we do see that we have a couple of bolts here. We have to remove those and then we're going to have to remove these little screws. Some of them you can do them by hand and some of them I would suggest just very gently take them off. So let's go ahead and start removing the bolts and then we'll get started with the screws. And feel free to take a picture of this or pause the video and that way you guys know exactly where the bolts are going. I don't necessarily think I need to specify where each bulb comes in or anything as they are just bulbs. But some of these ones, because we are missing some of these screws like right over here, I think that's the only one. But if you're missing a couple of them, I would just definitely keep in mind that there are screws connected in certain places. We have to remove this as well. So let's just uh, be mindful of that and be careful with that. If this is the low fuel uh, bulb so this one lights up when your fuel is low mine has never worked but i just realized it's because i never actually noticed that this bulb is actually broken so we might just change this bulb and see if it works if not i may get the circuit board later on down the line but let's go ahead and give it a try and see if it works all righty now to start removing these screws i am using a eight wrench but I would suggest maybe a smaller one as this one fits a little bit loose, but because these screws are not fully tight, should be easy for me to remove them without too much pressure, so. All right, now that I'm done with this, I'm gonna go ahead and remove each one of them by hand. I don't wanna put too much pressure. And I think when installing the new circuit board you gotta be very careful I would maybe even suggest to just install them by hand because a little bit of pressure can crack this thing or dent it or you might break the copper wiring behind it so just be very patient very careful and as always don't rush any of this and notice that this little capacitor here has a different wow that was loud guys it like freaked me out but this one has a different kind of look so let's put that one to the side we're gonna put that one exactly where that where the where we found it out we're not gonna try to mix that one in that was scary all right let's see let's get this off very careful, put it to the side. All right, let's continue. Once we have all of them off, let's go ahead and gently take it off. All right, seems like we are good to go with this. This one was the old circuit board and this is what I'll be using today. So exactly the same exact look, size, everything. So this one was kind of burnt here. 
and I think that's why the clock wasn't working and my gauge started messing up my oil gauge started messing up I think it has to do with the fact that I destroyed this when, on when I was plugging it in so just be careful when plugging it in but I just want to show you guys how it looks One thing to note guys is the copper that you see over here, that's the exposed side. So that's the part that has to be looking to the inside of the car pretty much. So this little hanging area has to be towards the clock. So that gives you kind of like an idea of how to put it. But for the most part, it has to align. Okay. All right. Make sure all of them are in. Make sure there's no stress between the screws there. They gotta have enough movement. This one will kind of look a little bit off, but once you install the screw, it's gonna go flat. And that's because the clock is kind of looking at, it's kind of a little bit above the rest of the, the other items. All right, let's start getting some of those screws in. We're gonna start with this part right here. And I kind of want to lay each one of them first and then I'll give it a quick tie up. I don't want to over tie because I do see how this could potentially break or rip when you're tying up the screw. So I just want to give it a quick tie, but nothing too crazy. And use common sense, don't over tie If you feel like you're tying it up too much, don't do it. But if you leave it loose, then you may cause a bad connection. So just kind of play with it and see how far you can get before before you make a mistake. <laughs> and sorry about the amount of uh, noise. It's, it's raining really, really bad here in Houston. And uh, yeah, there's not a lot I can do about it. My garage is cranked open just a tiny bit because I don't have enough light. And also, uh, it's really hot. I'll tell you a little bit of a story, but uh, I went to a car show this morning, um, it's, uh, West Houston Muscle. They do these shows every month or so, and they're very interesting. You meet a lot of people. There's a couple of Corvettes like mine in there. Uh, saw a whole bunch of Shelby Corvettes, which is my dream car for sure. But uh, but you get to talk to a lot of people and you get to meet new like new people and talk about car issues and you know, car stuff. Uh, but man, when I tell you guys it gets hot in the car, I was, it's not a joke, it was, it was bad. So I think I'm gonna try to work on the AC uh, for a upcoming video, see how that goes. So, so I think the idle for the air, air conditioner, it's a little bit too, either too tight or too loose, and it's causing my car to rev, uh, rev up when I'm at a stoplight or something if I have the AC on. The AC works, not amazing, but it works. But that's an issue that I'm having. So I think either I'm gonna have to take it to a place so they can kind of tweak with it, or I may give it a try myself. I just can't find a lot of information on it. If you guys have any head pointers on that, I will gladly take it and try it out. In other news, I ordered a extinguisher, a fire extinguisher. I've never spoken about this, but it is good to have an extinguisher on an older car because you could run into some serious issues. So it's always good to have an extinguisher. So I order an extinguisher from Amazon and uh, supposed to get it in the next couple of days, but make sure you have one in your car. All right, so we're done with this. We've already tied every single one. This one didn't have one as we remember. There's nothing going to it. So I'm, I'm sure that's why there's not one. Let's go ahead and tie it up, but let's do it very gently. Let's not overdo it, okay? All right, looks pretty. Let's get on with the rest. Let's start adding up the bulbs. So remember, this one with the giant motherboard is for the low fuel. So that one will go over here. I'm able, I was able to put every single screw back in. I was able to also install everything the way that it looked before. <laughs> there's no, there's no message on the other side, so I'm just gonna leave that blank. 
and the uh, clock was installed. Hopefully that fixes the clock issue and hopefully my oil pressure gauge works as it used to. I'm gonna be very careful when putting this in. These are prone to breaking, so I don't wanna risk that again. As you guys can tell, it happened on this one. So I don't want to risk that again. So I'm gonna be very careful and try to do it the best I can. Uh, okay, so just to give you guys a quick update, I was able to plug everything back in. I was very careful in plugging in the main circuit or the main terminal for the gauges and everything. And uh, so far nothing's working. There's no battery connection just yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in and hopefully it works. So whatever you guys are looking at is what I'm gonna be looking at. So if the clock works and the gauges works, then we know it was the circuit board. If none of it works, then we know it was the circuit board. And we'll just have to go into step two, which is probably be pissed about it and just Google the crap out of it. So let's get to it. All right, so battery is fully plugged in. There's now light in the car. Let's go ahead and give it a quick crank. We're not gonna turn it on, we're just gonna check to see if anything works. Let the seal the light work. Clock doesn't work. Battery works. The oil pressure is working now. Gas works. This one works. And I'm missing a couple of lights here, so let's let's check on that right now. Woo. Okay, so I was able to get all the gauges to light up normally. And I believe the main problem was because I think there was a misconnection in one of the lights behind so I had to sort of redo it uh, but I think it's it's good now so let's go ahead and tie this up we're gonna crank it up and maybe that'll make the clock work let's give it a try So what this taught me was that by rushing it and connecting it so quick to test out the radio, I damaged the motherboard or the circuit board, I'm sorry, which was working just fine. As you guys can tell, the clock still doesn't work. So I may have to repair the clock internally. And I've seen the videos and it looks very painful. I don't even want to do that. I don't even know how to read that clock. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, luckily I was able to get help from um, Kevin on eBay once again the link down below for the circuit board and he was able to hook me up with this amazing circuit board and I think it was about time for it to be replaced but uh would have liked the clock to be working so I think that just has to do something with the clock it is very common on this cars to 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 have a clock that doesn't work so don't be afraid uh, it happens with that being said I think this was a this was a good learning moment for for me at least and hopefully for you guys uh, to not rush it as I said the circuit board was working and I damaged it on the process and I had to uh, replace it this is not an expensive replacement but you know like I said luckily I had Kevin to help me out with this uh, but this could have been uh, a 30 40 dollar replacement so with that being said, this, this video was helpful. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments. A lot of the gadgets are working like they should again. Uh, once again, leave any comments down below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.